Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com bringing you another fly tying video. This week it's a stone fly. I haven't tied a stone fly in a little bit for you. And uh, I was just messing around at the bench today. I've been tying a bunch of borders here lately after the shows and uh, getting ready for the next show. So anyways, I've been into the, just needed a change of pace and then I wanted to tie a stone fly for today's video. So this one's a real cool one. It's an upside down stone fly. The reason it's upside down, I'm tying it on a jig hook. Uh, on a fire hole 523 really cool long shank jig hook and uh, it's real nice keep it thin that's what i'm trying to do with this pattern i don't want a big oversized stone fly i just want one you know a nice simple small one that's going to catch fish um, reason i'm tying it upside down is because the jig hook is intended if this is the hook jig hooks intended to ride hook point up so with the hook point riding up i'm going to put the wing case and everything on the top of the fly which would be the actual bottom of the fly when you put it in your vise hence upside down so have fun got tying guys change the colors of this thing for sure i've tied it in some browns some purples i'll show you one one before i start in a purple one which would be a cool steelhead color uh, but browns blacks yellows the natural colors that i always like to fish in stone flies so here you go here you're going to see a picture of the fly then the material is to tie it Okay, here you see the upside down stone in the vise. This one's a purple one, be a good steelhead one. Uh, I'm going to tie it in a golden, but I just wanted to show you a different color there just to give you some ideas and uh, have fun, play around. So, let's get into tying it here for a hook. I'm going to use a fire hole. This is a 523 in a size 14. Um, nice size, not too big, not too small. You got that long shank on there, I like it. Um, for a bead, that's a 3.5 millimeter moonlit bead in copper, slotted. And then I'm just using some yellow uh, Semperfly Nano Silk thread here. Just going to tie that on there, cut off the excess, and then we're going to wrap it back towards the bend. Next thing I'm going to put on is some yellow um, biots, turkey biots, and this is going to be our tail. So just going to start one on each side. I like to do them one at a time. I can have a little bit more control over it. You can do them both at the same time if you want. Oops. There we go. Get them the length I want them. Not as long as the body on this extended shank especially. I don't want my tail to be too long. I want it to be proportionate. So just pay attention to proportion. And then put one on the other side. And we're just going to wrap it, wrap it down. Next thing I'm going to put on is the rib. For a ribbing, I'm just using some brassy wire. This is red. Uh, it's just because it's going to show up a little bit better. You can use gold. Use whatever color you have. It doesn't really matter. It's just this red stands out nice on the yellow body that we're going to tie. So I'm going to tie that in, and I usually tie it on the side closest to me, which would be away from you on the camera here, but just wrap that down, get it all nice and covered. And then I'm going to put on some large flat pearl tinsel. And I like to put it on my bobbin because I can spin it out nice and even and not waste any. If I cut off pieces, I end up wasting some. And I'm just going to cover that thread Cover that body there with thread and just make sure I hit everything. And the thing I'm really trying to do to judge when I have enough is whenever I can turn and see that the wire is not showing through. I got a couple wraps up here towards the front. I just want to try not to build up, but just cover. With this nano silk, it doesn't build up a whole lot. I like that, but I just want to make sure I get all that color covered up and then get it up in there behind the bead. Now I'm going to take my rotary vise here, use my rotary vise to my advantage, and wrap that mylar up. So just make nice side-by-side -side wraps, and spin that up to the bead. And then we're going to tie it off. We'll 
Once we get that tied into place, just trim that off. And now you can go back to the rotary here if you want to, but I think I get a little bit more control if I just do it by hand and make nice even segmentations here with my red wire. Just keep wrapping that up and get that up in there behind that bead. And then make oh, a couple wraps here just to secure that, tie it off. And then helicopter your wire off. Okay, now, because I have a rotary and I can flip it upside down, it makes it a lot easier. If not, turn the hook over in your vise and you can do the same thing. So, I'm going to come back here a little bit. I want to go about a third of the way back on my hook here. And we're going to put in the wing case. For the wing case, I'm just using a piece of pheasant tail. And I'm going to take about 10 fibers off of there. So just pull a clump about 10 fibers wide there. And then I like to cut the tips off. So tie, cut the tips off, get it nice and flat. And then I'm going to tie it upside down. So when I tie it down, the bottom side is facing up in the air. And I'm just going to get it in there, make a loose wrap to get it where I want it. And I want it to be on top. I'm going to roll it around there to get it to where I get it on top where I want it. And then wrap it down and pull it back there towards the, towards the bend of the hook. So there you see there, I got about a third of the way back on there and we're ready to go. Next thing I'm going to do is put on a little bit of dubbing. This is Golden Stone. Um, this is SLF Pattern Blends, Whitlock's Pattern Blends. And I don't want a lot here. I don't want to build up too thick. But I want it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go back there to that um, pheasant tail and wrap this up about halfway. I want to go and then once I get it about halfway, I'm going to come back in with some biots, strip goose biots. And I'm going to go with white ones this time. And I'm going to put one on each side. And I want it to flare out to the side. This is going to be the, just the legs on it. I'm only putting two on it here. Just one on each side. You could do four. You could do six if you really wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary. Make a couple wraps there. Trim off the butts, and then grab a little bit more dubbing, and we're going to finish up up to that bead there. So just get this on here, nice tight noodle, and then finish wrapping right up in behind that bead. Once you get in behind that bead, we're going to. Pull our pheasant tail up over for the wing case. And we're going to tie it down right behind the bead there. Just give a tug on it so it's I'm sure I have it where I want it. Trim that off and whip finish and we are done with our fly here. So if you really wanted to, you could put a little bit of UV resin on there on top but I don't think you need to. And there you go, the upside down stonefly. Really cool looking pattern. It's gonna fish great for you. Okay guys, hope you like that pattern. Not that hard to tie. Do a couple of them, you get onto it real quick and you can hammer out a lot of nice looking flies really quick. It doesn't take you long to tie and it looks really good. So have fun tying. Like I said earlier, change the colors. I always tie stone flies when I tie them, I always tie three of them, blacks, browns, and yellows. And because uh, they're always in my stream, we have different ones in the stream at all the times. And and they can imitate small mayflies too. Well, actually very large mayflies, sorry. But um, just mess around. It's more the silhouette rather than what you're actually trying to imitate. You know, put the right thing in front of the fish's face, he's going to eat it. So. Have fun tying. If you need any help with anything, you can reach out to me at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. If you want to do any custom orders or something, if you like these and want me to tie some for you, uh, wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. If you need any of the materials to tie them, though, please go to our website at wholesingersflyshop.com. I love uh, tying these things on video for you here and sharing them with you every week. 
and I'm very thankful for you for supporting our channel. And if you haven't already, give us the thumbs up and um, subscribe to our channel. So thanks for watching everybody. Until next week when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.